Over the course of the year, I've been collecting pallets. I built a pallet shed out of these pallets and still had plenty to spare. Collected sand from the wash as well as rocks, loaded them into the truck. Taken them back and sifted with a screen to make a fine sand to mix for stucco and plaster. Collected rainwater and filtered it to make the water usable for plaster mixes and stucco. Built our own earth bag structure out of sandbags and even put this retaining wall up using stones from the property and mixed our own mortar mix. Built this 1100 square foot chicken run out of pallets and used mesquite branches for the top of the fence. Put together our own solar array. Had no idea what we were doing, but we figured it out. And now, currently, we're putting plaster on the inside walls of this earth bag structure. The point of this video is to talk about homesteading economics and labor. Everything's not always what it seems, folks. And sometimes you gotta sit and do the math before you just pick up a project and start going forward. So I'm going to talk about that for a few minutes. All right, so I'm going to lay here and enjoy the air conditioning and talk to you guys for a few minutes about these projects I just mentioned and what I've learned over the course of the year here. Um, so when I said not everything's what it seems, um, one of the things that you're going to learn when you start homesteading or building your own structures and things like that is that there is no such thing as free. And let me repeat that there is no such thing as free so whether you get free pallets you get free sand from your wash you get free stones whatever it is you're gonna put in the sweat equity in order to make that stuff quote free now it doesn't mean that it's not worth it but it does mean that sometimes you got to sit and do the math in order to decide whether or not it is worth it so I'll give you an example so that sand that I talked about, um, you know, the thing is with sand is if you go to the store and you look at bags of sand right now, you can quickly do the math by taking a stopwatch, getting a five gallon bucket and sifting through sand and filling up that five gallon bucket. And once you fill up that bucket, you hit the stopwatch and you look at the time and you go, okay, that took me 30 minutes, you know, to fill up that, that bucket. I don't remember the time, honestly, but anyways then i'm gonna go take a look at a bag of sand and i'm gonna say okay how much is this bag of sand and <clears throat> is it worth it for me just to buy bags of sand and just you know just get it over with and just pay the cost up front so i don't have to sit and sift through all the sand well right now the answer is no um i actually save plenty of money by doing this myself even if i were to pay myself to sift through that sand and that is mostly the the math that I do out here. It's not complicated math. I'm not teaching you guys how to save for your 401k. Trust me, I'm not the guy. Um, but what I will say is that when it comes to doing projects by yourself, DIY, which I can honestly say I've got tons of experience in that, um, sometimes these projects turn around, they bite me in the, in the ass, and then, you know I look back and say, man, never again am I doing that. Um, I'll give you an example of something I would not do again. Um, when I first came out here, we dug the um, perimeter for that earth bag structure and we dug down about three feet deep and did it with a shovel, a pickaxe, and then eventually a jackhammer. And what I will tell you is never again. After doing that work and we hit a couple of caliche veins, there's no way in hell I would ever do that again. I would simply just pay someone to excavate it. It would be well worth the money. For the amount of time that I spent doing that project, they're digging that, it, it was not worth it, I can promise you. So that's an example. Um, sometimes you're not gonna learn until you do a project and then afterwards you're gonna go, man, never again. Sometimes, you know, you get sucked into a project, you think it's only going to take you an hour and it ends up taking you 10 hours and then, you, you know, you wish you would have never started it. So I don't have a simple answer for some of these things, but I will say that over the course of the year, I have definitely learned that 
sometimes you even got to take a project and put it on the back burner so for example there might be a couple projects or for in our case about 10 projects that we want to get done and we do the cost analysis on it and we'll even pull up a spreadsheet and i'll you know pop it into excel and say okay this is the cost for materials this is the cost if i pay someone to do it this is the cost for me to do it myself how long how many hours do i estimate this is going to take um and is this worth doing myself and a lot of times no it's not worth doing myself it's it's definitely something you want to pay someone to do um maybe just because you don't want to do it i mean that's a good enough reason but uh so what we'll do with those projects is we'll set them to the side and i'll say okay right now i can't get to that project because it's not in our budget to do it this month or this this year but it is something that eventually i want to pay someone else to do um if it's something where you just don't have the money and maybe you're unemployed well in that case then your time man you might as well just spend your time doing the project so you know there's no simple answer everybody's got their own unique set of circumstances and i know i've had my own set of circumstances where i've done things that on paper probably wouldn't have made sense to people but for me it made sense at the time because maybe i just wasn't doing anything with my time um one thing i'll say is that because building materials have went up so much your sweat equity is worth way more than it used to be so now it's it's well worth the time for me to spend the time to collect pallets and it's well worth the time for me to make my own mortar uh, my own concrete because you know if i look at the cost of these things now versus a year ago or a year and a half ago you know a lot of times it's a no-brainer so anyways i'm gonna get back to work but i hope this helps a few people and if you haven't liked and subscribed please do i'm still coming out with that plaster video it's just taking a little longer than i thought it was gonna take so this is Dwayne. over and out